We've been criticizing WWE's booking a lot. But after years and years of declining WWE ratings, they finally got it. The female WWE demographic is about to skyrocket. Bobby loves them women, women love them Bobby. It's a mutual feeling. Shit, I love Bobby. Now welcome back to the channel ladies and gentlemen. I don't have the best track record. Whenever WWE put on a great show, I don't record the review. That feels bad, like previous episode was actually pretty big and I didn't make a video. That feels bad. Now this show is actually special for one big reason. The crowd was somewhat good. Now we have people who are saying that crowd was amazing and you have other people who are saying this is blatant WWE use of Thunderdome special effects. Like WWE are stacked with sound effects right now. Let me know in the comments below, do you think that we got some loud ass fans or a fan? I'll say it is pretty suspicious, especially during the opening, which was Roman Reigns kicking off Monday Night Raw. I do the same after a big ass pizza. Pictures that go hard. Paul Heyman welcomes us to Monday Night Raw. He introduced Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns said, acknowledge me. But this was such a nothing segment. We got a double RKO. RK Bro introduced Drew McIntyre and left him alone with Roman Reigns. So we saw Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre brawling in the ring until everyone got involved. We got a bunch of officials and they broke the brawl. You could literally write this in under a minute. Roman Reigns tells the crowd to acknowledge him, and his rivals attack him in the ring. Groundbreaking. <laughs> it was pretty decent though, like that double RKO, it does go hard. The Street Profits are sane. They know that it's not Elias, it's obviously Ezekiel. How can you not tell the difference? He has no beard. He has no body hair. Duh. Because he's younger. He's not a big drinker though. Then we saw Alpha Academy, Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens accuses Ezekiel of lying. He even spilled drink on Ezekiel. I feel sorry for Ezekiel. Like, you just made your WWE debut. And you can't escape your brother's shadow. Every Everywhere you go, people are thinking about your brother. That must feel bad. And this was before the big six man tag team match. WWE nailed it again. In this episode, we got multiple six man tag team matches. The more the better, by the way. Give me those six man tags and I'll keep chugging on them. Let's take a moment to appreciate Ezekiel dressed as a girl's bicycle. He kind of reminds me of the Ultimate Warrior, to be honest. So this was a nice little match. For whatever reason, I know Ezekiel's gimmick is really, really basic. He's a pro wrestler with a generic look who's a brother of another pro wrestler. That said, somehow, I still find it entertaining. And probably the only reason is because he's Elias' younger brother. And some people think he's not. These people are crazy, I know. But some people actually believe he's Elias. Kevin Owens grabbed Ezekiel's leg, which resulted in a roll-up, and Chad, Gable, Otis, and Kevin Owens won the match. I have a question for you guys. Do you believe that guys like Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn are being buried? Because I'm seeing people throwing around that word really, really loosely. And I... Honest, I personally see Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn as two of the most entertaining WWE superstars right now who don't necessarily need the championship right now. Every time we see these guys, they just create top-notch entertainment. So, are they really being underrated by the WWE? Or WWE just know that these two can be put in anything and they will make it entertaining. It's interesting. Adam Pearce says that Sonya Deville is not a WWE official tonight. She's a wrestler. And she will be in a six women tag team match. She wanted a no disqualification match. Don't make me show my balls. Adam Pearce taking full control again. Then Rob blessed us with Veer Mahan. And he faced this young gentleman right here. I like his chances. He said it's always been his dream to be a WWE superstar. He worked at some kind of barbecue, and now he's ready for the big time. He doesn't realize he's about to face a man who's been saving. He's about to face a man with unlimited willpower. And of course, he got squashed. He tapped out in seconds, and that wasn't enough for Veer Mahan. Again, these matches are not doing anything for me. At all. He just defeated a guy that I don't even know the name of. What, what does that supposed to 
Tell me. Edge hates the fans. He says AJ Styles used backstage politics and asked Adam Pearce to ban Damien Priest from ringside at WrestleMania Backlash if AJ Styles will defeat him tonight. Edge knows most of the fans can't stand to look at themselves in the mirror. Even if they're not, they should. And he basically mocked the crowd, mocked their sports teams or whatever. Like, y'all know, Edge is good at this. For someone who says that the fans' opinions don't matter, he does react to them quite a lot. So then we saw AJ Styles versus Damien Priest. Like, that's something I don't really like about this uh, Judgment Day. Damien Priest, you know, he does kinda look like a lackey right now. Like, yeah, he's with Edge, that's a great spot. But it's one of these cases, Edge cannot lose, so make sure his lackey loses all the time. Anyway, Edge tried to get involved, but AJ Styles still picked up the W after the match. Edge attacked AJ Styles. Edge Finn Balor! The Bullet Club! Yes, Finn Balor got involved and the Bullet Club just reunited. I mean, that's pretty cool. It's possible that we might see them as a legit tag team. You know, Edge and Damien Priest versus AJ and Finn Balor. That's really possible. But also, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, later, like, a month or two, we will see Finn Balor joining, or even earlier. He will say, yes, I lost a lot to Damien Priest, but he made me realize the fans suck. Something along those lines. I don't know. He'll get black eyeliner. I didn't think about it before, but... I think Finn Balor would really fit in. Cedric Alexander is interested in renewing his previous business relationship he had with MVP. But MVP has moved on to bigger and better things. Cedric says Shelton isn't here tonight so he's going to show what he can do on his own against Bobby Lashley and MVP is interested. Then we saw Miz TV with a special guest Mustafa Ali. And the Miz was just effing around. First Mustafa's music cuts, then his microphone didn't work and we just heard the Miz insulting him. Miz brings up how Ali just came out and interrupted his interview with WWE United States Champion Theory last week. Miz asks if Ali's act of desperation was because he's never been a champion or because the fans forgot about him during his hiatus. Just don't go to Twitter to complain. Ali takes the microphone and says the only thing we all want to complain about is you still working here. Then we see Theory and he says, I talked to Vince McMahon and you losing against Mustafa Ali doesn't count anymore. It's not in the records. Theory also said Mustafa Ali is going to get a qualifying match. But it's a handicap match and that was next. I kinda expected Mustafa Ali to win if I'm being honest. But that didn't happen. But we did see a pretty cool skull crushing finale. I really don't mind this relationship. Miz and Austin Theory. I always looked at Austin Theory as the... Not necessarily next Randy Orton, but, you know, his pose, the finisher, everything kinda reminded me of Randy. But after last week, I've realized he kinda reminds me more of The Miz, in a way. At least his gimmick. By the way, thank God WWE decided to cut Ali's theme song, because, like, I keep talking about this. Like, every time we see a new WWE theme song now, it's from something that was actually different to a generic ass instrumental. That happened again right here. Then we saw Champa attacking Mustafa Ali. And it's funny how Mustafa Ali just never acknowledges it. Like, that happened for the second time and he's like, I'm focusing on The Miz. We saw the 24-7 championship. Dana Brooke and Nikki ass. Dana Brooke won. Rigi acted impulsively and tried to pin Dana. And she wants a divorce. But truth got him covered. Then we saw Seth Rollins and he says the spotlight is on me. And after people started chanting for Cody, he says it's funny you say that because WrestleMania he tried to steal my spotlight. But this rivalry got personal. Cody says I've always been respectful. Even after you pushed me off the top rope, I tried to be respectful and professional. Things got heated though when Seth Rollins started insulting Dusty Rose saying that he wasn't good enough to be a WWE champion. You're not you're not good enough to be a WWE champion. He basically insinuated that Dusty wasn't good enough, but it wasn't Cody who started the attack. Seth went for the punch and we got a brawl. So this is personal now, and I think that's the only match I'm actually looking forward to when it comes to WrestleMania Backlash. Well, that and AJ Styles versus Edge. Then we saw Bobby Lashley versus Cedric Alexander. Obviously, Bobby takes the W and sends the message to 
Omas, are you guys excited about WrestleMania Backlash? Dewdrop says, are you ready to take this more seriously? And Nikki Ass says, yes. What's now? A Joker gimmick? And the main event was a big ass six women tag team match. Rhea Ripley, Becky Lynch and Sonya Deville versus Liv Morgan, Asuka and Bianca Belair. This was a pretty big match. Asuka coming back already added so much to the women's division. And SmackDown desperately needs Bayley now. And this was an awesome match but I don't really care about this Bianca Belair versus Sonya Deville storyline. I think we already seen it like it's pretty much identical integral to Sonya Deville and Naomi. Like it's pretty much literally the same storyline. Bianca Blair pushed Sonya Deville's feet off the rope, Liv Morgan for the finisher and the babyface team wins. That was your Monday Night Raw. I mean yeah, Raw ain't perfect by any means but I don't get the same shitty feeling after Raw that I get after watching Smackdown. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below the great one. Peace, love and hugs. It's been a pleasure.